Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Focus. Today's show is all about the Oscars, the winners, the losers and the films that make it all happen. As ever, we've got the 60 second news, Josh Wright's top five, James in front of a fireplace and a review with our in-house wizard. But first, we've got the 60 second news with Christopher Carter. Hello and welcome to this week's 60 second news. I'm Christopher Carter and here's a roundup of this week's film news. And we start with today's big casting news and Shia LaBeouf is in the news again this week. The actor has dropped out of Barry Levinson's comedy drama Rock the Casbah. How LaBeouf's withdrawal will affect the all-star project, we don't yet know. And the first stills of Tom Hardy's latest film The Drop have appeared online. The film is the last to feature the late actor James Gandolfini. Based on Dennis Lehane's short story Animal Rescue, the film is directed by Michael R. Roskam. It's out in the UK at the end of this year. And it's a busy time for trailers this week, as this summer's blockbusters draw nearer. New trailers for Jupiter Ascending, Into the Storm and Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have all been released. Be sure to check out our description for all the links. Well, that's it from me this week. Until next time, bye-bye. Wow, well, thank you very much for that. And today's guests, we have Luke Stevenson and Patrick Wilson. But we'll be talking to these guys a little bit later on. Uh, but first, a big thank you to my mother, my agent, the producers, and the next door neighbour's dog. That's right, it's acceptance speeches with James in front of a fireplace. It's time for James in front of a fireplace. Good evening. Fresh out of the Oscars, when the world vaguely pays attention to Leonardo da Vinci not getting an award and Gravity getting everything because it's the first film about slavery in space, I feel it's only right to dissect and laugh at Hollywood's finest when they give their speeches when accepting the awards, starting with Lara Croft herself, who demonstrates it's probably better to simply list ten names and leave rather than embrace incest for ten seconds. I'm... I'm in shock, and I'm so in love with my brother right now. <laughs> Maybe Angelina and Brad just weren't quite as in love back then. Oh, who am I kidding? They've always been perfect for each other. But you know, speeches don't have to be thanks. They can be informative, as Christian Bale demonstrates. If you, if you want to be a champ, if you want to go train with him, go meet with him. DickEckland.com, go do it. Check him out, okay? All right? He deserves it. However, Oscar speeches can also teach you how to be a complete like James Cameron demonstrates. There is no way that I can express to you what I'm feeling right now. My heart is full to bursting, except to say, I'm the king of the world! <laughs> Thankfully, the only dialogue anyone remembers in the film Avatar is the color blue so he won't have to embarrass himself and everyone else anytime soon. Speaking of which... Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Please, just say some names! James Murphy. James Murphy. James Murphy! James Murphy. And now, to show you how it's done... And the Oscar goes to... And the nominations are James Murphy for James in Front of the Fireplace, Josh Wright for his... this thing, and that's it. And the winner is... <laughs> of course it is! It's James Murphy for James in Front of the Fireplace. Uh, Uh, I, I, I kind of punch. <laughs> I want to thank my um, my friends, uh, and my family. <laughs> I apologise. I can only hope I never actually win an award in the future. And to any of you lucky enough to, please do it with grace and dignity, like Gwyneth Paltrow. And my friend Kate Blanchett and the greatest one who ever was, Meryl Streep. 
I, I don't feel very deserving of this in your prison. You've been watching James. Uh, thank you very much there, James. Some very interesting acceptance speeches there. Uh, but first, well, we're back into you guys. Good to see you, Luke, again. And Patrick, thanks for joining us. Uh, and Patrick, you actually uh, tweeted live during the Oscars for the, for the Rock, didn't you, here in Bournemouth? Well, I, do, <laughs> I joined in with the tweeting. I don't know if mine were the most newsworthy tweets, but I did help along with the live blogging and such. That's good. And what did you think of the Oscars overall? Was it, was it, a, was it a good one this year? Yeah, look, the, Ellen had a lot of safe humour compared to past hosts, I think. But uh, yeah, it was a good show overall. Uh, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, so, f straight in, the winners. You know, I think, I think quite a big one of the evening was Best, best Actor with uh, Matthew McConaughey winning. And, and what do we think there, Luke? Well, I think at the same time that the internet had a meltdown when Leonardo DiCaprio didn't win that, I probably had a bigger meltdown. I am probably Leonardo DiCaprio's biggest fan on this panel. <laughs> Just say, I want to speak for the rest of the world. But, you know, um, McConaughey's award felt a more like a Best Improved award because he stopped doing awful movies like Failure to Launch, which is just dreadful. But like, you know, Cabrio's been making quality movies for 20 years and like his performance in Wolf Wall Street probably wasn't as good as like it was in The Aviator, which he was also nominated for, but he, th he certainly deserves one. After all the quality he's produced, giving it to someone who's just done their first really good film in a while is, I think, a bit, a bit lame of the Oscars, really. Yeah, and it was at Blood Diamond as well, was he nominated yeah, for that as well? Yeah, Blood Diamond as well. As well. Yeah, right, yeah. And hashtag poor Leo. Yes. <laughs> the fans' reaction, you know, what, it, what do we think? It just wasn't his year this year, unfortunately. Um, I really think last year he should have been nominated over Christoph Waltz for Django Unchained, and probably he should have won that. But this year there's just way too much competition. You had 12 Years a Slave, you had, you know, Dallas Buyers Club, which the, the Academy obviously loved because it's an actor playing with an illness where they don't have any physical deformities perfect for a best actor <laughs> win there. Uh, it just, unfortunately, it just wasn't his year. And, uh, and uh, going off of that there, the best picture, 12 Years a Slave, good, good choice, good move there. I, I think it was very predictable. As soon as you hear, like, you know, there's going to be a slave drama that comes out around about Oscar season, then you know, well, that's one. It just kind of defeats the competition. And it's like, whether it was, like, the best movie, I don't think so. Like, you should think, like, Gravity and Wolf Wall Street really pushed things where they haven't been pushed before. So... I don't think 12 Years Slate was a just winner, it was just an obvious winner, and they just stuck safe with it. That's good. And uh, actually going with you, Luke, there, um, you're going to tell us a little bit more about uh, American Hustle, I believe. You, you reviewed it, didn't you? That's, that's your thing. Yeah, I, didn't, I kind of think like, American Hustle kind of proves that um, David O. Russell is either the illegitimate son of Harvey Weinstein, or he is in fact a warlock with the power <laughs> to confuse all of us. Because he's been heavily nominated for the past two years, and like, he made uh, Civil Lines Playbook, which was a romantic comedy which people seemed confused with One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And then he made American Hustle, which was just a heist movie. People seemed to confuse it for Goodfellas. You know, me, those were very average movies. They weren't Oscar movies. It kind, of, it kind of proves the point that if you release a movie in and around December, you're going to get nominated for an Oscar, and that's all that's happened. And it's just like, the performances were okay. The sets were, the sets were probably the most in interesting thing about it, because it's a period piece. And like, Bradley Cooper's managed to be entertaining again, which is fine. He's kind of finally shuck off that hangover thing. But you know, it's just, I just, I didn't understand it. It was just a very safe heist movie. They didn't really take itself anywhere. And you know, for that you feel like Gravity and like Wolf Wall Street, it's like, it was a completely different league and the American hustle being there. It's like just an excuse to get Jennifer Lawrence on stage, really. That's great. Well, thank you very much for that, Luke. Uh, so that's Luke's little review there on American hustle, but we're now gonna take a look at Josh Wright's top five moments. <laughs> the Dolby Theatre at Hollywood and Highland, it's the Oscars! Ladies the Academy Awards, the Oscars, where the most talented and skillful directors, actors, cinematographers, writers and more receive their due in the most awkward television production possible. For winter's so much happened this year at the Oscars, from Ellen's Selfie, sponsored by Samsung, Samsung Galaxy. Travolta's pronunciation of Adina Menzel, Leo going home empty-handed once again, Jamie Foxx's slow motion running. The geniuses who do it right. Whoopi Goldberg, just Whoopi Goldberg. The Wizard of Oz. And pizza. Run out. Okay. Yeah. But it's difficult to choose the top five moments of the Oscars. Top five funniest, top five most awkward. Top five reasons why James in front of Fireplace hasn't got the comic fur that Ellen held as host this year. Why does no one want to massage me? In the end, the best choice was the top five strongest moments of this year's Oscars. Number five, 
Ellen DeGeneres hosted this year, and it paid off rather well. Oh, never mind. She was funny, connected with the audience, and overall made the show a more enjoyable experience, compared to last year's host, Seth MacFarlane, who had a rather controversial sense of humour. I would argue, however, that the actor who, who really got inside Lincoln's head was John Wilkes Booth. The awards had a Snyder feel to them as he picked on the artist's flaws rather than celebrating their talents. Daniel Day, we love the beard, but Lincoln's voice was kind of weird. Whereas Ellen provided a more upbeat tone, more suitable for a celebration of the greatest films of 2013. Our next presenters probably think they're so great because they are. Number four, Jared Leto won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his role as a transgender AIDS patient in Dallas Buyers Club. He thanked his family, including his single mother, who'd raised him and his brother through their younger years. He recognised his fellow nominees and the 36 million who had died of AIDS. An overall cracking speech. For you, thank you so much and good night. Number three, Bill Murray and Amy Adams took the stage to present the award of Best Cinematography. But before announcing the winner, Murray took time aside to pay tribute to the comedy director-actor Harold Ramis. Oh, we forgot one. Harold Ramis for Caddyshack, Ghostbusters and Groundhog Day. Passing away in February, Ramis was known for working alongside Murray in Ghostbusters and Groundhog Day. The shout-out received by far the largest cheer at the Oscars. Please forgive me, gentlemen. Number two, Lupita Nyong'o's acceptance speech for Best Supporting Actress. Just, just, just watch it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to bring a tear to every audience member watching. And at number one, 12 Years a Slave won Best Picture, a film which looked at America's ugly history, forcing its audience to look at what their society once was. The film truly deserved to win and is a pinnacle film of 2013. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The Oscars was a smashing night, and though horrendously awkward with egos, muck-ups and Pharrell Williams suit shorts, it marks the end of a great year of film, except for all the foreign and independent films still due to be released in the UK from 2013. But now's not the time. That's my top five. Back to you in the studio. And uh, another very good top five from Josh there. And uh, we're coming back in uh, with um, the hosting, actually, I think, which was mentioned a little bit earlier with um, Ellen DeGeneres this year. Um, I think the reaction was, was a lot better. Yeah, a lot better this year. Uh, very safe humour. They obviously wanted to play it safe this year. Uh, Anne and Deck probably would have been a bit more risky. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, she did a great job. You had a lot of funny bits. You had the, the selfie moment, which was huge which actually um, broke Twitter at one point with so many retweets and it even beat Barack Obama's um, you know, presidential it's a, it's election. a very nice, genuine moment, not like bought by any kind of massive corporation, that selfie, wasn't it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of that was seeing uh, Lupita's brother, who just yeah. snuck, managed to sneak into the yeah, shop. He was just, he was just there, so oh, yeah. he's here. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Well, and I think she'll probably be asked back next year, you know, very good. So. Yeah, very likely. And uh, I'm on to snubs. I mean, uh, there was a few here and there. Save Mr. Banks was that overlooked. Michael Fassbender. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, Jennifer Lawrence was another one for Best Supporting Actress, wasn't she? Yeah. Uh, the internet kind of blew up over it, and you know, because it's a huge following from Jennifer Lawrence um, on the internet. But when you watch Twelve Years a Slave, Lupita deserved that award. There's no bones about it. I mean, um, American Hustle. We've already said probably. <laughs> shouldn't have even been in the running. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence is a great actress, but her performance in that was, it was yeah. good, but it not Oscar worthy at all, especially I, compared to Lupita. Yeah, I think if Jennifer Lawrence had won that award at like actress awards at the Oscars would just become the Jennifer Lawrence award for being Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> because like, you feel like the four surrounding her, like every single thing that she does gets put into like a million different gift sets on Tumblr or something. Just everything she does is just somehow made newsworthy. And it's just like, it would have, I think kind of devalued it because Lupita really did deserve that award. And like if he won, I wouldn't have. I definitely would have agreed with that, that at all. Well, fair enough. Well, thank you very much to my two guests for today. And uh, this year's Oscars has certainly been good for some of the biggest films and British talent in the industry. And we're certainly looking forward to next year's already. And uh, but looking forward to next week, we'll be talking about all things sci-fi, from everything on the special effects of this year's big winner, Gravity, to the ultimate question of Star Wars or Star Trek. It'll be a tough one. But until then, that's all for now.